attitude number one. Focus on what you can control, not what you cannot. Attitude number two. Focus on what you can do, not on what you can't. Attitude number three. Focus on what you have, not on what you do not have. Attitude number four. Focus on the present, not the past or the future. And attitude number five. Focus on what you need, not what you want. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker. Today, we look at Stop Overthinking. 23 techniques to relieve stress, stop negative spirals, declutter your mind, and focus on the present by Nick Trenton. So, how about you slow down and relax? Reduce all that noise for just a bit. Make that choice and decide to listen. In this video, we look at ways that can help you break free of your self-imposed mental prison. We revisit powerful ways to stop ruminating and dwelling on negative thoughts, stop agonizing over the past and trying to predict the future. This one is about how to overcome negative thought patterns, reduce stress, and live a worry-free life. So stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have in use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. When we can recognize and master our own emotions, we can adapt the emotional state of mind that serves us better. Mastery over self is mastery over body mind and heart, or our emotions. We all live in a highly strung, overstimulated, highly cerebral world. Overthinking puts our ordinary cognitive instincts in overdrive. Excessive thinking occurs when our thought processes are out of control and causing us distress. Endless analysis of life and of self is usually unwanted. It's unstoppable and it's self-defeating. Whether you call it worry, anxiety, stress, rumination, or even obsession, the quality that characterizes overthinking is that it feels awful and it doesn't help us in any way. Classic overthinking over amplifies itself or goes round in circles forever, and thoughts seem intrusive. Thinking is a marvelous gift. The ability to reflect, analyze, and interrogate even our own thought processes is arguably the single most defining characteristic of humankind and the cause for many of our successes. Thought is not an enemy. Our brain is an extraordinary helpful tool, but when we overthink, we only undermine its power. People are desperate to solve the problem, not considering that their appraisal of what is a problem is in fact the problem. Simply trying to suppress your thoughts when they are running wild often results in the opposite outcome. You start thinking even more about the thing you were worried about. 
It is not the load, but how you carry it. Whether you feel an event as stressful and overwhelming comes down to how do you interpret and understand that event as well as how you actively engage with it, i.e. what choices you make. Two people can have vastly different appraisals of the same scenario. It is the appraisal that causes their experience, not the scenario. Some appraisals of life simply lead to more stressful outcomes. When you do perceive a threat, your HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenals, are actually stimulated. It's stimulated. Your brain triggers a cascade of neurotransmitters and hormones in the body, which then have physical effects. This is the classic freeze, flee, or fight response to prepare the body to survive the perceived threat. This is, there's very spontaneity, humor, or irreverence when someone's mind is too busy catastrophizing, right? As you can imagine, the physical, mental, and environmental aspects all interact to create one unified experience of overthinking and anxiety. Overthinking is not a natural state. And it is not necessary. It is a destructive behavior that we can actively choose to stop if we want to. Stress is a fact of life, but overthinking is optional. What exactly is overthinking? Overthinking is when you excessively analyze, evaluate, ruminate, and worry about certain things to a point that it starts affecting your mental health because you simply cannot stop. We've also seen that the key to taking charge is to change our mental models and the way we think about the world. We need to de-stress. Now, for overthinkers, the ordinary de-stressing advice is usually not enough. In some cases, it makes things worse. Instead, we need to gain conscious awareness of our thought process, then be proactive about stress management, and learn real techniques to ground and focus our thoughts. Our main goal in de-stressing is to pinpoint exactly what is going on in our heads when we overthink. All you need to remember is four simple techniques. Avoid, alter, accept, and adapt. It can be a comfort in itself to know that really there are only these four possible ways to respond to any life stress. Avoid, alter, accept, and adapt. You are not helpless in the face of stress. You have tools at your disposal to use these tools. All it takes is a little awareness. If we can pull our conscious awareness back into the present, we can halt some of this overthinking. And then we can do this by checking in with the five senses. To put it another way, the brain can carry you all over the place, but the body and its senses is only ever one place, the present, the here and the now. With panic, however, we can be sitting in a perfect place, in a sunny garden somewhere, and nevertheless feel like we are going to die. Such is the power of the mind. Think of it this way. Your conscious being can only do one thing at a time, either having thoughts or being immersed in the moment via the senses. 
it is one or the other. If you can tether your consciousness to the present moment using your senses, it is difficult for your mind to simultaneously run all over the place in anxious overthinking. A story is a way to organize, to slow things down, and to remind that you are in control when it comes to where and how you place your attention. You cannot look at everything all at once. <clears throat> Trying to do so often makes you feel powerless and small in the face of overwhelming thoughts. But, as in any good story, you don't have to figure everything out immediately or solve every problem all at one time. The five, five, four, three, two, one technique. This is highly effective at stemming panic attacks and it does so by involving all five of our senses. So whenever you feel panic overcoming you, look for five things around you that you can see, four things that you can touch, three things that you can smell, two that you can actually hear and one that you can taste. Engaging your senses distracts your brain from overthinking. There's no point talking about time management without knowing what your goals and your priorities are. Good time management depends entirely on the outcomes you are aiming for, and so you need to know what you value first. With your values in mind, you can then start to decide what is important and what isn't, i.e. you can rank activities and tasks. Busy people can sometimes act against themselves. They're so flustered that they actually put off important tasks, which then become critical tasks, which then cause them far more stress than if they had dealt with them swiftly the moment they did first appear. Here is an example of a fairly poor goal. I want to become healthier very poor goal setting. Here's the same goal, written to satisfy each of the SMRT SMART criteria. I want to eat at least five servings of different fruit and vegetables daily, i.e. each serving is 80 grams. In the effort to have a better diet in general, and I want to maintain this every day for the remainder of the month. Here, the goal is specific, S, specific. It is five different fruit and veggies a day. It is M, measurable. We can track 80 grams. It is A, attainable. It is not very unrealistic. It is R, relevant. It makes sense for the broader goal of a better diet. And it is T, time bound, both in short term, since it's daily, but also in the long term as well since it's going to go on until the end of the month. So SMART. Now, SMART goals do not change the difficulty of the task ahead of you, but they do help you shape and define your vision so that then you can act with more efficiency. One of the biggest sources of our anxiety is poor time management. We tend to prioritize things that actually make us miserable, and then we refuse to give enough time to things that we actually really do enjoy. We seldom take time out for adequate leisure and relaxation, so we must consciously do this in order to improve our anxiety levels. Some tips to follow are making regular to-do lists. Prioritizing your tasks in the order of your actual preference. And breaking goals down into smaller pieces, more manageable pieces. One thing is clear, relaxation. Relaxation is something to practice just the same 
as any other good habit. We cannot rely on relaxation to just happen by itself. And there is no reason to reserve these techniques for situations that are already gone south. Rather, we can do them anytime. When you relax, your heart rate, your breathing, your blood pressure drops, your digestion, your blood sugar levels improve. You moderate stress hormones in the body. You reduce fatigue. You reduce muscle pain. You increase concentration. You increase good sleep. You increase confidence. All this spells less anxiety and rumination. So help yourself. It is all about deliberately calming the central nervous system, which is where anxiety and overthinking begins, biologically speaking. Instead of being reactive and helpless in the face of distressing thoughts and sensations, you learn to control and direct them, regulating your own emotional state and your psychological arousal. It's a revelation in itself. We are not subject to the whims of our bodies and the random turning of our minds. But we can consciously and deliberately shape our state of mind. And the more we practice, the more masterful we can be. In meditation, we cultivate awareness and then we come into the moment. With guided imagery and visualization, we also do the same. But once we have detached from the stressful thoughts, we then direct our awareness to a target of our choosing. Meditation and visualization can work beautifully together. They do work beautifully together. Genuine stress management taking charge of our mental models and attitudes, building more relaxation into life, and being proactive with how we use our time are all foolproof ways of getting a handle on anxious overthinking. Now we can turn to the thoughts themselves. CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Techniques, will not help if we do not have an adequate grasp on the ideas covered. More stuff comes before. Many people find this out the hard way. They realize their overthinking is a problem. So, they tackle the issue on the mental and cognitive level. They actually ignore their excessive caffeine intake, their hectic lifestyle, their unresolved traumas, and their chronic habit of undersleeping. With the best intentions in the world, they embark on a CBT program that then promptly falls apart the very second they hit a rough patch or are triggered into an old spiral. A 2017 research by Kudu et al. found predictable patterns of cognitive distortions in those suffering from social anxiety. And one of the most recognizable patterns was overgeneralization. Personalization is another one. This was another distortion common to those who tended to have maladaptive appraisals of so social situations and therefore anxiety. When we personalize, we take things personally. Create a habit of sitting down your overactive mind and questioning all those automatic, unconscious and unhelpful thoughts it does create. You take on the role of a neutral investigator or a scientist, a researcher getting to the bottom of things. But some of our most cherished assumptions and biases might linger on 
even after we have checked them for cognitive distortions, behavior change is possible, but it takes time. And it usually works best when you take the global view, i.e. not only consider the architecture surrounding your behavior, but also the thoughts that actually support that behavior. Clarify the belief. State clearly what your thought is and then write it down. Write it down as well as the associated emotions and its intensity. Create a hypothesis which contains a potential alternative. Create an experiment to test this hypothesis. What would you need to do to genuinely put this belief to the test? Run the experiment as open-mindedly as you possibly can and then write down your observations. Analyze these results. What conclusions can you make? And finally, make adjustments to this belief. And when you are unsure, come back to your experiment. This is important. Emotional regulation begins with emotional acceptance. We do not become better at working with our emotions by learning to push them away, but by learning their names and becoming well acquainted with them. And there you have it. Stop overthinking. 23 techniques to relieve stress. Stop negative spirals. Declutter your mind and focus on the present. By Nick Trenton. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video. Like this video. This is cool stuff. If you have enjoyed this and if you believe that this is cool information, please do like it. Share it. Share it too. Spread the word. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Start a conversation. Tell me what you think about all this stuff. Which of these techniques are you practicing in your own life? Subscribe to my channel, stay up to date, you know how to do this, where to click, what notifications to turn on. The link to this book is in the description below. Buy it, read, never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, then do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.